So today I will talk about the entrepreneurial ecosystem and I'd like to define it as the environment in which business value or business values are created and business values are delivered to the customer. Sometimes this is also called the business model. So this is what we are going to talk about. Now the material that I am using today mainly is from a book that's called Business Model Generation. Very good book, highly recommended by me. And uh, we have a number of copies uh, in the library, if you would like to have a look at. The reason why I, I, I am using, uh, and this is called the Business Canvas, but the reason I'm, using, I'm not using the Business Canvas, I'm using an entrepreneurial ecosystem, is because I've added few uh, items to to this um, to the business canvas so at the heart in the middle you could see what we say the value proposition the value proposition is what is your business or what is your entrepreneurial activity is set up to deliver so a university its value proposition generally would be to give you education, but specifically could be education that will ensure that you will get a job. So that would be like a unique maybe value proposition. There is a gen generic value pro proposition that maybe everyone would say, I have a university, so I will provide education. But if X or Y or Z university is well known that if you get a degree from there, you will get a job very quickly, for example. So their value proposition would be that when you study here, your degree is highly uh, appreciated by employers and you will get a job easily. So that, w that value proposition will attract certain customers, people who are interested in this. The, uh, the uh, uh, people in the fashion design, uh, you, you will notice that the, there are some um, suppliers or designers that their value proposition is they will give you very com comfortable kind of attire. Some of them may be very trendy attire. So that's the value proposition that you are delivering to uh, your customer. Some of the supplier will give you cheap products. So their value proposition is I'll give you the lowest price in the market. And if you find anything cheaper than me, I'll pay you the difference. So that's the value proposition. So this is something that you really have to define very clearly before you go out and start working on your project, your business, or your entrepreneurial activity. Now, once you identify the value proposition, which is in the middle, you need to think of the customer. So the customer would be here. So we have the value proposition here. You have the customer here. And these are the channels through which the value is delivered to the customer. So if, for example, I am using the internet to sell audiobooks or ebooks, so my channel would be my website and the internet. But if I am uh, uh, delivering McDonald's to, to the customer, so maybe I have two channels. One would be my, my, my restaurant itself, one of the channels where the customers will come to me to receive the value proposition, or it could be my delivery people who will deliver the meal directly to your house. So this would be what we call the channel. This part here is, talks about the customer relationship. So how do you keep a relationship with the customer? How do you first inform or make the customer aware that you have this value? So this includes your marketing, um, your uh, customer service, your call center, the, 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 the connections that you develop with the customer, but it supports the value delivery and it's not the value delivery itself. Now, if you look at this value proposition, so let's say the value proposition is 
a, a healthy meal from, let's say, Subway restaurant, then this, although it's delivered at the Subway uh, shop, you will, you will know that there will be some key activities need to be done on certain resources that we have. And you may have some key partners to help you with this. So if I take the Subway uh, sandwich, the key activities that happens within, within the shop, what, what are they? Can someone give me an example? What happens in the Subway restaurant? I'm sure you know, please. This is not a tricky question, it's a very simple question. When you, any, any one of you went to Subway? Raise your hand if you have been to Subway. Okay, good, so you've been to Subway. So when you go, what happens there? Oh, someone asks you, um, what, what sort of sandwich would you like today? Um, what kind of bread would you want? What's the feelings and, um, you know, and so on? But behind, behind the counter, there's things happening, right? So what do you see? Do you uh, see baking? Uh, yes, yes. So there's there is baking. baking. Yes. So baking is an activity. Do you see uh, uh, slicing of bread? This is an activity. Do you see putting the filling in the bread? This is an activity. Do you see putting this material inside the oven to, to roast it? This is an activity, right? So this is done by, by the, these are key activities that are done on the resources that we have. The resources could be the, the vegetables, the, um, the meat, the bread that they have. These are resources. Now, these resources, you would know they, the uh, uh, subway did not plant the lettuce. They don't own the farm, but they have partners who have delivered this to them. So you would see that at the center is the value proposition upstream is how the value proposition is delivered is if it's meal how it's cooked if it's a car how is it assembled and so on and how you utilize some partners from outside your 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 uh, uh, organization to do it and after you have the value proposition then you need to deliver it to the customer and also you need to keep a very good relationship with the customer, inform them of any new um, promotions or any new flavors if you have, let's say, the pizza uh, outlet. Now, what we have here, this part, as you move on, you get material from the key partners you have key activities. All these, are, all these activities, they consume money. So Subway will buy maybe the flour from the mill, will buy the, the, uh, the vegetables from the other suppliers. So Subway is paying. So this is here, at this part here, there's always cost. You pay money as a business money is going out from your coffers to your suppliers. This end of the, the, uh, the business canvas, you have revenue. So you, hopefully the customer will be paying you. So here you have cost, here you have revenue. So that's, that's in general is the business canvas. Now, wh what I felt personally that the business canvas is missing is two main things. We said that the business environment should represent the entire environment within which value is developed and delivered. So if I pick the example of Subway again, and if you please show me again your hands if you have eaten in Subway, just raise your hand. I want to ask you a question, don't worry. Okay, okay, so all of you. Do you eat in Subway every day? I don't think so. Oh, you eat every day? Almost every day, you, like me, yeah. So, so majority of you don't eat in the same place every day. And 
One of the reasons is the existence of some other places to eat. Can I, can I say so? So these other places to eat, what is their relationship with Subway? So they are competitors, exactly right. Do you see any competitors here? We don't see the competitors. So I thought we really need to add the competitors in the, the business model. Uh, there's another thing, so I'm going to show it to you right now. So I created something I call the entrepreneurial, the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So I, I thought there will always be a competitor. And even if you come up with something totally new and there is no competitor, the moment you do it, someone else will, will, will open shop and become a competitor. So a competitor is actually a fact of life. At the same time, at the same time, I thought the business environment in general, which refers to how is the economy doing? Are people employed or not employed? Things like that also was not reflected because sometimes it's the same idea when it is delivered or, or done during good times, it will flourish. If it's bad time, it will fail. So I will go again and explain the same, the same thing one more time, but this time using the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Now, some people would like to use the, uh, the business canvas, and I am I'm, I'm totally uh, agreeable with that. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is inspired by the business canvas because this is a, a very beautiful way to see the value proposition in the middle. You have here every activity and resource needed to deliver the value proposition, and at the other end, everything that you need to deliver your value proposition to your customer. So value proposition in the middle, this is the cost and the material that you put to create it. And here is the channels that you need to deliver them to the customer. So here, I will presume that if this is a tree, the apple is the value proposition. Now, you have customer, but if you notice, this customer is getting the apple for free. There are, there are many businesses now where they have millions of customers that don't pay anything. And you are among these customers. I see you nodding. Can you give us an example of a business and, and maybe speak through the microphone of a business that you... Uh, Air Asia. Air Asia, you, don't, you get it for free? Not me, but I know some people. Not me uh, exactly, but I have some people who get it for free. Right. So, is there any other business that actually is giving you something for free? You? No. 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 Maybe an iPhone? Yeah. iPhone, they are giving you iPhone for free. No, applications for free. So, there are apps that are given for free. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you use email? I use email. Yeah. What email do you use? Uh, mostly all. Mostly all? Yeah. So this is mostlyall.com or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm using Hotmail. Okay. So you're using Hotmail. So how much do you pay for Hotmail? Nothing. So Hotmail actually is giving you, uh, what's the uh, memory, the capacity? One gig? More? I don't know. Yeah, so, so they are giving you the service for free. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. You actually didn't even feel that they are giving you a service. You just take them for granted, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And, and, and there are actually businesses that will deliver the value for you for free. So this value proposition of, let's say, Hotmail is an email with a certain capacity, with a certain user experience that you could rely on all the time, but you are getting it for free. Now, at the same time, there are some other customers who will be paying for maybe the same value. So Hotmail and other email uh, providers, they do have other things that they sell. So what, so what do they sell? Do you know what do they sell? Maybe he wants to answer since he... Uh, Microsoft Office. They sell Microsoft Office. So, so they sell some, some other products. And Gmail, what do they sell? How do they give you... Google Maps, Google Image, 
uh, Google Scholar. Phones. Yes. yes. They have phones. They, they, add, they, they have their own phones. They have their own phones. Right. Okay. So what, what are their phones called? Android. Genesis. What do they call? The Nexus. Ne Nexus. The Nexus, yeah. So, so, so G Google has its own phone. That's called what? Nexus. Anyone using Nexus? Who's using Nexus? How is it? How is the phone? Good. You like it? Okay, great. So, but, but what, so I don't think they have really penetrated the market that much to make so much money to run all the service. So what else do they sell? Mainly? Android. You sell Android. How much is Android, the operation system? It's free. Oh, it's free again. Sorry, it's free. So what do they sell? I think Eric want to say something. Advertisement. They sell advertisement. They sell advertisement. They make a lot of money from advertisement. Mainly, actually, the money that they make is from advertisement because the operating system, the Android, is free. So this is, so you, you see there is a, a, a value proposition that could be either free or maybe delivered in a different way and to a other kind of customer that is uh, paying. Now, in both cases, to deliver the, to, to, to develop the value, whether it's free email or a paid email, there need to be some resources. So what, the email, whether you are paying for it or not, there will need to be some data centers, some computers, some programmers, some stuff, and these electricity bill, rental, and these are things that Google or Hotmail will have to pay for it. So these are uh, resources that need to be paid for. At the same time, partners also help the business to develop and deliver the business value. So for example, Google utilizes a lot of electricity for, for, their, for their data center, but they don't necessarily uh, generate maybe the electricity, although they are trying to move into this. So the, the, the businesses that generate the electricity and provide it to them, or the businesses that make the computers and sell it to them are considered to be partners. They need to give them a very good service, and only when they receive a good service from their partners, then they will be able to deliver the value proposition, whether it's free or paid for. Now, once you have the uh, resources that you need, then the business activities are the, the, the activities that you do so that you convert different resources into the value proposition so that you can deliver it to the customer. So as we said, in case of if the business is in the provision of emails, then the key activities would be what? So what are the key activities in Gmail or Google or uh, Microsoft? I'm not sure, Dean, just try. Is, is the question clear? Email. Is the, is the question clear? What is the question? Uh, what is the business activities? Yes, to deliver an email. So what does the business do so that they can give you an email? I don't know. Really? So what, what's an email? Like a virtual letter. Is it a virtual letter? So the email service, the, 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 the the mechanism that brings these pictures to life so that you have pictures and images and letters. What, what, what do we have behind? Code, maybe? Code, yes, yes, the code. Yeah, so what, what, do, you, what do you call making the code? Coding. Coding or programming, yes. Yeah, so programming is a key activity that, that happens. In, for you to, de to develop any website in that, in that, uh, uh, in that sense. So, so this would be maybe a key business activity. But if you, have, if you have a restaurant, then cooking 
baking would be your key business activities. If you are making um, cars, then welding, manufacturing, assembling, this will be your key business activities. So the cost and revenue would be the cost that you pay for the partners to get the resources and revenue would be the money that you get it from paying customers. So you have both cost and resources. Now while you are happily developing your, uh, your business plan, happily thinking of your project, happily preparing your campaign, don't ever forget about the competitor. So the competitor would be someone who will be delivering a similar value proposition. And a competitor will give the value, will always try to give a better value proposition. So a better apple or a cheaper apple or it's apple, but I will give it to you faster. So there will always be something that the competitor would, would like to compete with you. Now, there will be, you will be competing with someone else is actually provided that someone wants that value proposition in the first place. Because if you are making something that's valuable only for you, the others don't really think that it is valuable, then I don't think whether you have a competitor or not, it, it's, it's not really that, that important. Now, at the same time, you never forget about the business environment. What is the prevailing condition? Is the economy doing well? Do people have money to spend? Do people have some extra money to spend on clothes? Do people have extra money to spend on travel? Do people have extra money to spend on education or whatever you are trying to do? You need to think of that. And understanding the prevailing business environment, you then will be able to um, choose the business or the entrepreneurial activity that you would like to embark on. So uh, this is what I have for the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Any question thus far? So it's exactly like the, um, the business canvas, but you add to it a competitor and you add to it uh, the business environment. Any question? Good. So now I will go to each and every one of, of these uh, elements one by one. Now just, just to share with you, last year, both in the final exam and in the recent exam, there was a question about the uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. But I won't just tell you, draw me the entrepreneurial ecosystem. I will always either give you a company and I say, draw the entrepreneurial ecosystem for that company, telling me who are the customer, what is their uh, cost and revenue model and things like that. So there's a, quite a bit of thinking. So if you have any question, it's a, a very good idea to, to ask me. So you need to always ask yourself, who is my customer? And you'll find, although this sounds like a trivial or a simple question, most of us, many times, don't really know who are our customer. So we need to really ask ourselves, who is our customer? So let me just, just ask you a question. Who do you think is the customer for Taylor's University? Taylor's is a private university, charges quite a high fee. So who do you think is the customer for for Taylor's University. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, you see. The rich people. Rich people are the customer. So everyone who is rich is our customer. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> Do you yeah, agree with him? You need to afford to so pay. I, so this is, this is a room that's full of rich people, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's only him. Talking about himself? Oh, talking about himself. Okay. Yeah, you please take the Let us have. So anyone who's rich is our customer? Mostly. Mostly. So what if the rich doesn't even they say, look, I'm so rich, I'm studying abroad. I don't want to study here. You are not that rich. That's why you are here. <laughs> if you think about it, right? No? Is that right? Yeah. So who is our customer? Not the rich people. Students. 
Okay, so are the students our customer? Who agrees with him that our customer are the students? Raise your hand. Okay, oh, keep your hands, keep your hands. I just wanna see, so Lewis thinks not. You guys think not. Okay, and you also think, okay, thank you. Okay, so, so, so who do you think is the customer if the customer is not the student? One second, can you, can you just wait for the, for the mic, please? Yeah. Yeah. Should have just raised your hand, then you saved yourself. Oh, it's okay, go ahead, yes. Actually, students is a, can be called as a customers, but lecturers, all the staffs, everyone can be called as a customers. Right. So it's not only the students, but okay. So this is a very interesting point. He say, not, uh, he didn't raise his hand because he thought students are customers, but, but he sees the lecturers are being customers as well. Now, maybe the university say, customers, lecturers, they pay the lecturer. I, the, this university actually pays me. So you are here, you pay to be here. I am paid to be here. See the difference? That's why you, you can afford to sleep in my class. Because you are paying to be here. Yeah. True, right? Yes, yes. You see? Yeah. So you pay here to listen to me and sleep. Good. So who, who else you guys thought uh, maybe you, have, you had a different um, point of view? Yeah. You, can you just speak it to the... Yeah. The parents are the customers? So, so he thinks that parents are the customer. Can you tell me why? They're the one paying it? Because they're the one who, is, who are paying. And, and maybe they are the ones who even asked him to come here. He wanted to go somewhere else. You wanted to go somewhere else, right? Yeah, you see? So who brought you here? <laughs> Your father asked you to come here. Send my regards to him. I think he's a, he's a, he's a smart guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lewis, why, who do you think is the customer? Please. Well, the customers, yes. Um, parents should be the customer because they are paying it instead yes. of the students. Right. But other than parents, there are also industry, industrial company. Yes. There's also the customer for tailors because they are findings, they are findings fresh graduate for their company as right. well. Okay. So, yeah. It's quite a big picture instead of just students, their parents or industrial company playing in parts of serving as a customer for tailors. Yeah. Good. So, so, so what, what Lewis is saying is besides, besides the, the parents and the students, you need to think of the employers who are also in a way customers. They do receive a service even if they don't pay for that service, which is hopefully very good graduate with an entrepreneurial thinking. Uh, nonetheless, they are in a way our customers, which could be true as well. So, so this, this, uh, this is a, a simple example that I've given you, whereby if you ask maybe different people, uh, they will give you maybe different answers. And this is, uh, this is an indication of, if we are not sure who is our customer, is the customer is the parent because they are paying or is the customer is the students because they are the one who come to my class and sleep then then I, I don't know who to satisfy because sometimes to satisfy the parents you need to do something to satisfy the students you need to do a totally different thing now whatever you are doing especially if you are especially for the project that you are running so for the for the uh, 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 film that you want to make for the, why are you making? So for the mug that you are making, for the t-shirt that you are printing, for the book that you are uh, developing, for the app that, where's Rafi today? He's not here. So, so he's, 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 I think, developing his app as we speak. So for the app that uh, you wanna develop, who is really the customer? Is the customer the person who uses the app? Just like when you guys come and sit in my class. Is the customer is the person who is going to pay? Is the customer is the, the, the person who is going to benefit from it? Like the employer in the case of, of, of Lewis? We need to ask ourselves this question and have a clear picture who the customer is. To my mind, I think 
seeing how the money flows is a very good indication of who the customer is so after you decide that the customer for me is the parent because the parent is the one who's writing to check the check that goes into the university uh, accounts department then I will ask myself as a university what do the customer value so they would value an education they will value maybe I make sure that you are here and if you are not here then I will need to do something about that even though you may not value that even though you may not appreciate that I come to you and I force you to to do the homework and I give you a tough time during the exam maybe you don't appreciate it but maybe the person who's who's forking the bill is is appreciating that now this as I told you although this sounds very trivial very simple but please when you write your business plans when you write your project clearly identify who your customers are now customers can be segmented so sometimes because they are in the market customers that represent the market we may have something we call a mass market so we develop a product that is suitable for almost everybody so Air Asia with now everyone can fly is an example of how you take a market that used to be reserved for the few and make it a mass market everyone can fly everyone now can use an airplane it's faster sometimes even maybe cheaper than the bus or, or the train or for some people as you said is free but not you never for you but you hear that it's sometimes free so this is a mass market but there is another market that we call niche market very few people can afford it maybe like the rich people or the very rich people very rich people right yeah so only few people can can uh, can uh, can afford it so if you look at uh, I don't know the Ferrari and the Porsche how many cars they make a year they don't make in the hundreds of thousands because their market is small but if you look at maybe Toyota or Proton in Malaysia they make or, or Hyundai I uh, in, in Korea they actually make maybe in the millions of cars because this is a mass market so that you could actually decide as as um, a business owner or as an entrepreneur what kind of market you are targeting are you targeting the mass market are you targeting a niche market now I really want you to pay attention to this because I've noticed in uh, those of you who have written the, the project some of you say when I, when I because I asked who's your customer I don't think there is really anything where the customer is everyone because when you say it's everyone it means my newborn baby and my 90 year old grandmother will want it I think I don't know very few products that will so you need to really think of who is your customer you really need to think about that you we often fall into the trap of uh, thinking just because we need the product everyone else needs it so customers can be segmented based on the age group so we have seen it in the presentation by Freda Liu if you recall when she talked about even the radio channels the young people listen to something the 30 plus listen to another uh, kind of channel those above I don't know 50 they listen to something else so that would be one way to do it the income also can be used to segment your customers so there are certain things that are available to everyone there are certain things that are available to you know very uh, very limited uh, number of people so they are very exclusive now I want to tell you that even the mass market is not market for everyone so even flight is not for everyone there are people maybe they cannot fly for health reason there are people that they don't they don't fly for religious reason there are people who don't fly for psychological reason I don't know uh, but you cannot say this is for everybody 
So you need to be really careful before you decide. So this is an example of a mass market, a niche market. Now, sometimes we have what we call a segmented market. Now, if you, uh, maybe not in the uh, uh, Air Asia, but if you fly, let's say, Emirates, then they have business class, they have first class, they have economy, most of the planes, most of the airlines have that. So what did they do? They actually segmented the market. It's the same airplane. It will, it will take off at the same time and it will arrive at the same time. But they have segmented the experience. So you can, you will have maybe nicer drinks and you will have them in nicer cups. You have a bigger space. You have more service and, and things like that. And this is called maybe business class or first class. So although the market sort of, or the value that is delivered, the, the main value is the same, which is I'll take you from Kuala Lumpur to Dubai. You fly at that time, you arrive at that time, but the experience within, the airline used it to segment the market. So you need to uh, see this as uh, another technique or another way to segment your customers. So uh, on the same airplane, you are uh, able to address the needs of the, those who are traveling on budget and those who are traveling, uh, you know, who have extra money to spend on, on this. Uh, diversified market uh, refers to the businesses that actually provide a wide variety of, of, of needs. Uh, I have a fridge at my uh, house that's made, up, made by Samsung. I see people having a uh, phone, Samsung phone. I think Samsung makes air conditioning. They make TVs. They make phones, radios. They make. So this is when you diversify the market. So when, when the company make a choice that they are actually into multiple kind of businesses, then they are uh, addressing the needs of a diversified uh, market. So this, this is, these are things that and thought that I wanted to share with you uh, about customers. I really would like you to, to, to start thinking of everything as, as a business, and then you see how uh, the, uh, the business owners are seeing the market. So are they targeting the mass market? Are they targeting a niche market? Are they targeting a diversified market? What are the markets that you could, uh, you could segment? What are the markets that you cannot segment? So for example, can I say um, in, in my class, for those who pay higher tuition fees, I'll give them a nicer seats and some drinks. I don't think this will work maybe in education. But uh, we, there are certain students who are here on a full scholarship. We, they don't actually pay anything. And there are some students who pay the, the full fees. So this is an example of how maybe you, you, you want to attract certain quality of students so that you, ha you raise the quality of your cohort to, uh, by, by, by choosing to give something for free while the other part is uh, given uh, for a full, co full cost. Now let's talk about the value proposition, which is, so I talked, if you notice, this is, this is, uh, this is something that I've done on purpose. The first item or the first component of the entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem I spoke about was the customer, because the customer is extremely important. The customer is the reason why the business exists. And every business that uh, ignores this will eventually fail. So if this university is about the students, then we have, our business is you. We exist here because of you. And without students, we don't have a university. If the university decides it's a university that educates students. So now let me talk about the value proposition. The moment we, we are aware of who our customers are, let's see, and what do they value? So now let's see how do we deliver this value uh, to them. Now the value can be delivered based on newness. I give you something new. Now, do you know why is this? It's a phone. It's a phone. This is 
what kind of phone is this? Motorola, yes, that's the, ma the made of the phone. This is a mobile phone. This is one of the first mobile phones. It costs 10 times your iPhone. It can call very few people. And it is extremely heavy. And it didn't work all the times. The battery life was 15 minutes. Yes, yes, yes. But it was new. And sometimes because something is new, you could say this is my value proposition. Because this is new, you will be, so when I sell it to you, I say everyone else, when they want to answer a phone, they need to go to a phone that's plugged into the wall. You will be one of the few people who can take a phone outside, a phone call outside. And I know because you are a dynamic person, you are a person who is always influencer and leading in your field, this is the phone for you. So this is how they used to sell that phone. Then, because that previous phone used to be, you know, the performance was not good at all, you have a new phone. This phone still big, much bigger than any of the phones that you have, still much more expensive than any of the phones you have, still have a battery life that is lower than any of the phones that you have, but it was an improvement over the previous phone. So I will go to him and say, do you remember the first phone that I sold you? Now I got the real solution for you. This is even a nicer phone. It's more expensive, but I can tell you what, it has double the life battery. It can, it can be, uh, you can make phone, uh, phone calls for almost half an hour. Can you imagine? And, and this will, 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 you will be able to use it in 50% of the city. You know the previous one, remember you can use it only in 10% of the places? Now you can use it in 50%. We have service in 50% of the, of, of the city. When you travel to another city, it won't work, but that's fine. We can sell you another phone <laughs> that will work in the other city. So this is how the new phone is sold. It's sold normally based on performance. Then I will come again and say, do you remember the phone that I sold you for 5,000 ringgit? You know now we can sell you this phone that is much lighter and it's for like 10th of the price. And it's very robust and it's great phone. Everyone has the same phone. So you will have, and you'll be able to do text. You'll be able to do, uh, uh, to make, make calls and that's it. So it becomes based on maybe reducing the price, the cost. Then getting job done. So every phone, if you recall before we have the craze of the smartphones, every phone really looks the same, no matter what they do. And, and it does the job, they are very robust. And interestingly, they have a much longer, actually, battery life compared to the, to the smartphones that we have today. Yeah. Then after that, you start talking about the design. So you come up with something like that, which, which I believe is the reason why eventually we had the touch screen and we have the, the, new, um, the, new, uh, the new phone experience. So you ask yourself, whenever you, have, you want to have a, 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 a value proposition, how can you establish a value proposition? So you want to go into the market. You ask yourself, is what I am offering new? Is it different from what everyone else is offering? Or ask yourself, does it have a better performance than everyone else? Or is it cheaper than what everyone else is using? Or is it something that just gets the job done and I will just go and compete with, with, everyone, with everyone else? And, or is it designed in a, in a better way? It gives a better experience. This set of questions, you can apply them to almost any business that you have. So you want to have a hospital, a private hospital. You ask yourself, is there anything new that I could offer in this private hospital? 
Maybe yes. Maybe I have some new, new, new equipment or new uh, medical techniques or whatever. But if not, you ask yourself, do I have a better performance? So do, 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 do the patients have, get a better service, a better treatment, um, uh, a quick, quicker admission? If not, can I deliver the same service that everyone else is delivering at a portion of the price that other people are delivering? If not, just say, look, just like is hospital A, I'm hospital B, I'm just, is the same. So I just go and compete with them on, on, on the same, on the, for the same market. Sometimes it could be just how you design the experience. It, even if it's a car or a hospital or a university, does it feel better? Does it look better? So these are some of the factors based on which value proposition can be established. So we started with the customer, we moved to the, to the value proposition. Eventually, there are certain, certain um, uh, products and companies, their value proposition is really their brand. So even if you have uh, a Mercedes and you have, let's say, a Toyota, even if it's the same performance, even if maybe the Toyota is cheaper, the brand, the status that comes with the brand still represent a value to certain customers and they will still buy that uh, product. Okay, so we talked about the customer, we talked about the value proposition, and uh, sorry, I keep on stopping there. So sometimes your value proposition is just you are reducing the risk. And um, uh, the risk could be the risk of failure, the other device fails so often, mine doesn't. Uh, it could be uh, your business itself is about reducing and mitigating risk, like maybe insurance and, and, and things like that. So these are mainly the things that, based on which we establish value proposition. Now, at times, we may have more than one of these uh, components to establish the value proposition. Now, the channels, if you recall, so you have the value proposition and you have the customer. I have students who want degrees and I have a university. Now, the students need to know about the university, then I could maybe deliver the value to them. I have uh, rest great restaurants and I have people who want to go and eat out. How do you, uh, uh, sorry, I want to, so the, so I have, I have the customer and I have the value proposition. How do I deliver it to them? So if, if, I, if I am um, uh, Domino's Pizza and my idea is to deliver the pizza to you, how do I deliver this pizza through which channel? So you could come and eat at my restaurant, but I also can send it uh, to you. If I am um, a university, then you need to come here so that you attend classes, you can utilize the, the, um, the uh, library and other resources and so on and so forth. So the channels are to create awareness, also the marketing, the evaluation of, of the service that we are, uh, that we are having, we, we allow you to evaluate, and purchasing is a channel. So if you are buying a car, to go and buy the car, or if you are buying pizza, to go and purchase that pizza, how do I achieve that transaction? Through, through my channel. So the channels could be, you come directly and pay, or you could pay through the internet, uh, I may accept credit card, uh, some people do accept uh, check, some don't accept check, and so on and so forth. How do I deliver the material to you? That's also another way of, uh, that requires uh, channels to connect me to the customer. Now, another very important channel is the after sales. So you, you bought the phone, you bought the car, and now you have some, some issue with it. What to do? What call center you, you, you um, what, what number do you call? How will the call center uh, people treat you? Uh, how long does it take to fix your car or your phone when you are having an issue 
uh, with it. And customer service in, in, in general. Now this customer service and after sales could be as simple as fixing your phone or taking care of an airplane that Airbus sold to Air Asia. This from an experience as simple as uh, uh, um, a $1,000 transaction to maybe even a multi-million kind of transaction. So the revenue on, on cost, the revenue is what the business charges the customer. So the revenue of our university is literally the tuition fees that you guys pay. The cost is how much does the university spend to, 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 to create the value proposition to you. So the salary that they pay me, the electricity bill, the equipment that they are buying, the campus that they are building. So if the revenue minus the cost is a positive number, then we will have profit. So if, if, to cost, if this lecture is costing us 5,000 ringgit to run, and if the fee that we are charging you is 10,000, then you are making a 5,000 uh, profit. Now, if on the, other, uh, on the other hand, we are, uh, the cost is higher than the revenue, then we are going to incur a loss. So this is a very important, um, very important equation, very simple yet very important equation uh, for, for a business to remain profit, profitable. Now, the revenue comes from, you, have, you can sell asset. So if you, are, if you have things that you are selling, you could usage fee. So if you, are, if you have uh, uh, a network, for example, that you own and the uh, telco operators can utilize your network would be a usage fee. Subscription fee, so when you are utilizing the internet and you pay for it as you use. Renting, if I have a, a house or a shop and people rent from me and they pay me, there will be a revenue. Licensing, so sometimes I do have maybe an idea or a patent, then I license it for other people to use. Uh, brokerage fees, uh, it happens if you are, uh, let's say, in the... Um, um, stock exchange and then you do things on behalf of people and then you charge them uh, a, a fee that's how you develop your your uh, your revenue the cost it, w um, the cost will be something as as we said is what we what will the business pays for uh, for different um, resources to realize the the uh, to realize the value proposition and there are uh, different uh, cost kind of models so some businesses will thrive on low cost so they will sell things for cheap they will sell they will sell many things and through that Although the profit that they are generating is small, but by accumulating the cost, they will, they will be very successful and very profitable. So the low cost will be um, things like AirAsia, but also now more and more uh, supermarkets that they are saying we are the low cost supermarket. Um, the, variable, the variable cost would be when you, s you, you charge different costs for the same experience. So airlines are actually a very good example for that. So you could be sitting next to another person in the plane. Maybe he got the ticket for free. Got, maybe you paid $500 for it and maybe you have to pay $1,000, which all depends on when did you buy the ticket. So that's, that's, an, exa that's an example. Uh, freemium is when you provide the app, the light version of the app for free, but people have to pay for, for the full version they have to pay. Or when you provide the email service for free, but through advertisement, the company will be uh, making money. The, 
economy of scale refers to how the business can reduce the cost of the materials that they are uh, using. So for example, if you, if you are uh, um, a shopping kind of uh, business, retail, so retail business, and you have 10,000 outlets, then by the sheer value, sheer uh, force of the amount that you are buying, you could actually enforce cheaper prices on your suppliers and partners, and you could then pass this saving to your uh, customer. So this is how the, uh, different, um, the different cost structures and also different revenue streams uh, come into the picture. Uh, resources that are, are things that you require or you need to deliver the value pro proposition. So these could be physical, physical like I need wood, I need metal, I need petrol, and could be intellectual. So intellectual resources would be I need someone who is able to put these things together and they come up with, 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 with the product. Or I need uh, to own the patent for this, for me, for this product, for me to be able to manufacture it and, 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 and sell it. Human resources is the workers that you need, the lecturers that you need if you are a university, uh, but also the bakers that you need if you are a bakery, the chefs that you need if you, if you are running a restaurant. The financial resources is the money. So you need money to pay the salaries, you need money to, to purchase uh, uh, raw materials and so on and so forth. Business activities, we, we touched on that, sorry. Business activities is what you do with your human resources and the other resources that you have so that you could deliver, develop and deliver the value proposition. So it could be manufacturing, production or processing. It could be solution provision. So sometimes you go to someone who actually advise you to he just give they just give you a design for the 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 the, um, uh, the factory or the uh, component that you wanted so this is called solution provision uh, services also is an uh, example of the uh, business activities so this is mainly in uh, if you are running a hotel or running a restaurant what activity that you do to deliver the value proposition would be um, in, in terms of services. Partnerships are when you are dealing, when you have some strategic uh, alliances between uh, non-competitors, this is called a partnership. So for example, if you, if you go to uh, amazon.com and you purchase a book, the book will eventually arrive with a postal or courier service, which Amazon doesn't necessarily own. But they have a partnership with that specific uh, company so that they will do the delivery part uh, for them. Likewise, uh, if, you, um, if you purchase uh, something from Apple, it will come through maybe DHL. So that kind of partnership between DHL and, and Apple is is a very good kind of partnership. So Apple doesn't have to start its own courier company just to deliver the, uh, the, the phone or the iPad to you. Um, Co-opetition, you know, it's, it's something between cooperation and competition. So sometimes there needs to be some partnership between competitors. I'll give you an example. Um, the Universities and colleges in this country, they do have an alliance among themselves so that they could lobby the government. For example, when, when the Ministry of Education comes up with um, a new policy for a visa for foreign students, and this is affecting the foreign students, the international students who are coming here, then we could come together and through that alliance we make our voice heard. By, by the ministry. And, and likewise, other uh, kind of businesses like the restaurants, the hotels, and so on, they do have that kind of cooperation 
when they want to when there's something that collectively they want so they could come together and and cooperate on it although they are competitive uh, by nature um, joint ventures is when two uh, entities two business entities they have different core competencies and they say look you are good in programming I'm good in hardware let's form a new joint venture to create maybe better computers or better mobile phones so this is another way of achieving the partnership the buyer supplier is also a partnership so uh, if I pick the um, the uh, subway restaurant for example uh, again uh, as they buy the flour and they buy the different materials from their suppliers the suppliers when the supplier give them a good service then they and, and give them fresh ingredients and they give them the, the ingredients on time then there is a better opportunity for them to um, to deliver the value proposition so that's also a very important partnership something we want to talk about because we believe it's an integral part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem so whenever you are coming up with a product project activity business you ask yourself who is my competitor now if the answer is there is no competitor please you ask yourself again because even if there is no competitor then later when you come into existence a competitor will come someone will, will try to imitate you especially if you are successful so you need to be very critical when you do your competitor analysis so you ask yourself who is the competitor and what can they offer your customer so can they offer a better service can they offer a better price do they have a better location what is their competitive edge and what they call what is the competitive advantage that they have and you don't have and what will you do if you were the competitor so if for example you say there's no competitor ask yourself if I were the competitor to, the, to this business that makes mugs what would I do these are just question to force you to think in terms of the competitor so that you remain one step ahead uh, with your business now the the other part that I talked about was the business environment so what's the prevalent market condition is the market good is it bearish or bullish and what legislative system or within what legislative system your your business is operating so for example if you operate in China or if you operate in Malaysia if you operate in um, different parts of the world the legal system may be different and that's part of the business environment what are are there any opportunities available in the environment so sometimes there are some opportunities for example I still recall when the um, petrol price uh, was increased uh, people started to sell the um, uh, conversion kits for the car to to uh, make it use uh, natural gas so that's an opportunity that suddenly appeared because of something that happened in the in the business environment and what are the threats so maybe you are running a successful business now but something could happen in the market that threat that could threaten your your success so the last thing is I'm going to give you this assignment so after the lecture there will be after we upload the lecture there will be a quiz please answer that and I want you to pick a business and identify different elements of its entrepreneurial system and submit the answer online so I'll give you this and then you write the business name and then you put who are the customers what customer segments they have what channels they have what is the environment in which they are operating and and so on and so forth so uh, this uh, assignment is both for the on campus and the online students and I hope that through this we will see some examples of businesses uh, that are running uh, in different parts of the world 
Uh, any question? Any comment? I thought you have a question. No, no. Oh, okay. Oh, I was just dreaming. Yes, you have a question. Concerning the value proposition, is it related to the product image? Proposition, is it related to the product image? What do you mean by product image? Um, an image where you have like current products and your product, like your competitors yes. and your product. Let's say you're producing a car. Yes. Your efficiency, your price and uh, your design it yes. involves everything in your car, like the right. description of your car comparing yes. to other cars. Yes. That's your product image. Oh, that's, the pro that's what you mean by product image. So, so the performance is also part of the product image, right, you said? So, so the value proposition is whatever you are making or delivering, which could be a product, could be a process, could be a service, it's not necessarily a product, why would I, as a customer, want it? The answer to this is your value proposition. So you, you are doing mechanical, right? So you are doing a degree in mechanical engineering, and I'm sure there are other universities that have a similar um, uh, program. And I'm sure you've selected this university based on certain reasons. So that value that we managed to somehow communicate to you and convince you to join is our value proposition. Is, is it clear? So it could be maybe we cost less or maybe we have a nicer campus or uh, maybe because the degree is accredited by the engineering council so this will allow you to work in other places. So these are all combined is the, the value proposition. Whether you call it the product image, I, I, I'm not sure, but it really depends on how you define it. Okay, any other question? Uh, there's a question there, Azmira. Um, uh, Dr. Mushtaq, I uh, just want to check, uh, I'm curious about the part about the competitors part. When you're talking about competitors, yeah. You see, uh, usually let's say we are starting our business, yes. so the competitors is between business and then you find your flaws and you try to overcome it or you try to promote it, right? What if it's this business, the competitors was due to maybe because of uh, some kind of policies or whatever the government bring in? i give you an example, okay? Yes. For example, now we have um, preschool. Okay, let's say you're doing a business on preschool for kindergarten. Right. So recently the government brought in saying that uh, they introduced a few things, something like a preschool in the primary schools, which you don't need to pay anything. You, do, you get free uniform, there's nothing, no fees and anything. So how do, let's say, people who start on this kind of business yes. survive? I can give you another example. Yes. Uh, for example, we start our business selling groceries or whatever. Yes. So in the one Malaysia system or whatever, they brought the price very low and this kind of stuff. So if we have these kind of challenges, yes. this is just for anyone out there, how do we actually counter, how do we actually push ourselves up? Sure. Okay, very clear. Okay, so you guys have maybe haven't heard here, so let me, let me, let me uh, re, re, okay, I just want to go down. Because I think, I think actually the point that you brought is, is really good and really relevant. So the question was, what if the competitor is someone that's create by the, created by the government? So I gave an example. There are people who are running a preschool, like a kindergarten, and they are making you know, a living out of that. But the government is now introducing a similar service in the school itself. It, and it's not only free. They give them free uniform and other, uh, other uh, kind of perks. Or if you are having a grocery business, and now the government introducing uh, one Malaysia store which sells things very, uh, very cheap. So how do you compete with that? Now, I don't know how to compete with that. Because it's very difficult to compete with free. 
I just wanted you to, to have a, a thought. I, I, maybe that part I will put not under the competitor, but rather under the business environment. The reason I say it's under the business environment because this is something that um, the government now is, you know, wants to give things to the to the to the population. They, they are giving book vouchers, and and there is uh, clinics that charge you only one ring. There is a lot of things to actually uh, support the the people in, in in this country. So these things these things do happen. Now, as as a, a business owner in the preschool, there are two ways to view this. First, you close it and do something else. But, but also, you could actually look at what things that, what different things that you could provide that the free service in the, gov the government that provides is enabled to provide. So then you look at your value proposition and look at it from the newness point of view. Can you give something new, something fresh, something that the parents would like to have for their, for their children? Can you improve the performance somehow? Can you uh, uh, design your experience differently? So unless you are able to invent a value proposition that is competitive, there's no way you can survive. Did I answer? Okay, great. Very good question. Any other question? So if you don't have any other question, I uh, wish to thank you very much. And um, I will be available to answer any question related to your project or, uh, uh, or the course in general. But apart from that, I thank you very much and I wish you a very nice weekend. Thanks.